Hey guys, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today we're back with another teardown video on a 1500 horsepower 2JZ Superhead. Check it out. So let me tell you a little something about Frank who owns this cylinder head. He loves to ab absolutely abuse his cylinder head. He does not listen to me at all. Flame throwing. <laughs> Rolling anti lag. <laughs> Two stepping. <laughs> Bouncing off the rev limiter. <laughs> He does it all very um, profusely. He loves doing it. This is something he likes to abuse. And uh, it makes for great content on Instagram and it makes me really, really nervous. So I was really nervous to get the cylinder head back and see what it looked like. And what I seen really amazed me. This cylinder head looks freaking great for what he does with it. I mean, so we definitely see some oil deposits there is a lot of stuff going on here uh, that we're going to go over. So th this head started off as a head game CNC head, bronze guides. We did a 5266 GSC dual spring kit, and it had a Faria stock size valve in it. We did uh, the 2ZZ shimless buckets, and it left here with an S2 cam. We are going to start at the exhaust first. As I mentioned, there is a lot of oil deposits here. Now, when you see oil here, and here, it usually means that it's either going to come from a ring or, well, we'll go over that in a second here. But the exhaust seats look really freaking good. I mean, it is, uh, it's amazing that this head would look the way it would. I would expect it to be rounded off because of valve flow, but I see none of these. And now off camera, I actually checked the valve guides. Valve guides look amazing. They are nice and tight still. They actually didn't wear at all. Not so much oil on this one, but you definitely see a lot of oil on this one. Now, I don't think it's a cylinder per se difference. I think they all, like if you look at this one here, this one has a lot of oil. They all have, this thing was oiling like crazy. So this kind of tells me that it's doubtful it's the engine, it would come from outside the engine. Now I get a lot of times that people want to blame a valve seal. It's always the valve seal. It's always a valve guide whenever there's oil, but there's oil from many different places. Obviously you have an engine. So oil is not gonna only come from one place. Even if you have brand new parts, brand new turbo, brand new short block, things happen to these things that make it leak oil. I say that because there is oil coming from this area here. You can see it all around here. This is the intake port. The valve seat looks kind of hammered. Uh, we're gonna have to look at the valves on that. I've actually not inspected any of this stuff besides the cylinder head, but the, uh, the intake port definitely has taken in some oil and it's, uh, you can tell it's baked in there. Uh, from all over the cylinder head, it looks really baked in. So it, this has actually been happening for a while. Now the problem with oil is it doesn't detonate and uh, that means that you could be having other issues. And when you're looking at the intake port, you see all this brown. It's brown from here all the way back. And this is showing me that this is going on for a while and it's coming from outside the motor. And what I would venture to say, it's probably the turbo. The turbo is pushing oil and there is no way that oil, so if it was coming from a valve seal, which is what people normally blame, Oil is not gonna fight the forces of air to come all the way up here. So it has to come from outside of the motor and then it's gonna bake inside the port and it's gonna go into the chamber and the exhaust port. You see, it's really bad over here. Let me see how, but because it's so consistent, 
right? It's in every single port that there is no way that a ring, if a ring was going bad, they don't all go bad and go bad in the same way. So it would have to come from an intake manifold. You see it on the plugs as well. The plugs have a lot of oil on the outside of here. Um, since he was so gracious to give me the spark plugs in the cylinder head, I got to see how it was running. And uh, you can definitely see that there is, it was running good. You can definitely tell that the, the tune was spot on, but they definitely had some oiling issues. Now we're gonna move to the top of the cylinder head and we're gonna look at cam journals. Look how amazing. Now this thing was done years ago. I want to say three or four years ago. Uh, he runs E85, beats the absolute snot out of it, and you can see in the head as well, the head looks freaking amazing. Like this is a line here, but like it's nothing. Um, somebody definitely did some kind of polishing in here. I'm not sure who did that. That was not head games, but uh, somebody maybe have been in here before. I know he had a problem with the cam, but everything looks really really good i cannot complain about you know four years i think uh we didn't look at the last invoice but four years of 1500 horsepower and beating the crap out of it one thing you guys have to look at is the washer area on especially i i think i see it in every cylinder head um the 2j in particular some guys don't use the right size washer here and it it will dig into the cylinder head, as you can see here. So what we'll have to do is we'll machine this area out here, and then we'll machine this. And we actually have a nut and a uh, that can go with the stock size stud, and you can put a bigger nut and a bigger washer, and it actually takes up this entire circumference. Now we've tested a uh, this particular combination. We found this nut and we put it with a washer. We've tested it up to 2,200 horsepower, 2,300 horsepower. It's actually been used on uh, quite a few of the faster cars when they were still trying to use the stock block and it works out great. So what that's gonna do is gonna dissipate the pressure over a larger area. When you dissipate the pressure over a larger area, it's more likely that it's gonna stay put. So my man's been rolling with an S2 cam, billet S2 cams for five years. 1500 horsepower, look at these buckets. So there's two of them that were a little questionable and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But besides that, and I don't have all of them out here, but you can see, now you see these little swirl marks, you're gonna get that in any bucket because the bucket's supposed to turn. So you're gonna have a like a, a circle pattern, but what it shouldn't do is this right here. You see how like this is, starting to eat away at the center of the bucket and it's usually saying that we are not happy we are probably going into valve float and now it's beating into uh the the cam is basically hammering on the bucket instead of sliding with it because these are called followers so what happens here is that the uh, whenever you go into valve float now the bucket's going to be out of time and when it's out of time because they say it's called a follower so it's supposed to follow the camshaft now I know people have said that you can't use a uh, shimless bucket that's not DLC code with a steel or the, the billet cam, but that's absolutely not true. Uh, I'm showing it here because if it was actually a material issue or hardness issue, it would do it to all of them. The problem is that when it's not following, so when it's not sliding, it dies and it gets hammered by the camshaft. GSC titanium retainers. Um, now I know that titanium, sometimes a lot of guys say, man, you can't run that on the street because it'll wear out. You look at this, there is like barely any kind of marks here. Um, I would think that the car is seen about 20,000 miles. This guy drives the shit out of the car. Um, and I just don't see any wear that would cause me to have any kind of concern. Now this goes with the 5266 dual spring kit from GSC. Now this is um, one of the middle ground springs that we use after 1200 horsepower. So we go from the conical to this and then we go back to a conical. But I want you to pay attention to how, I don't know if you can see it. There's like some rust here. Uh, you can feel it. And this is things you can't see when you're, when you're driving your car, but this is an E85, not changing your oil and you have some condensation 
And what the condensation does is it is going to rust out all your steel parts. So this is a spring that is made from steel, obviously. And what could happen here is that one of the springs could break. This is just one of the reasons why when you run ED5, it's very, very important that you change your oil very often and also run a very good breather system. Uh, I would also suggest that you let the car idle a little bit, try to, try to get some of that steam out of the car. So back in the day, GSC had these uh, inner locators. Uh, the outside locator is just a shim, and then they had these inside locators, and you can also see some of the rust on here. And this is, I said, just from not changing your oil often enough. And then now, GSC has actually changed this. They don't use a two-piece uh, design anymore. They change it to one piece because, well, uh, Head Games and GSC work together. We didn't really like how these two go together, at least for installation purposes, that it becomes uh, a little bit of a problem to make sure that these are correctly and directly in the center of the spring. And it's innovations like that that um, they happen between two companies that don't have egos. The valves telling the story. So the valves, you can see this is the intake valve. You have oil on the back side of the valve. And that's how I said, I'm, I can see a lot of oil everywhere. And you can see it's just kind of caked on here and um, it's really gummy. So there's some fuel also, but it had a little ledge here. And that ledge, you can see it there. There you go. Know. That ledge is from valve float. Now it also leaves it kind of a shiny look. Sometimes it's a dull look, but the valve float is actually not that bad considering how much this dude just beats the living daylights out of it. I would expect to see some valve float because, well, he puts it on the limiter. So you can see this one. This one's a little bit worse. There's a there's quite a bit of a step here, and. Um, this is just telling us that we maybe needed to shim the spring up a little bit more and that way it was a little closer to coil bind and you can control the valve a little bit better. But honestly, I don't care who you are. If you're a flame throwing rev limiter dude, um, you're going to have some kind of valve train issues because that is, uh, it kind of comes with the territory. But I will add that Frank is on a Motec and I think that uh, so Randy Schoner tunes this thing and we're actually going to, I think we're going to do a video with Randy uh, and maybe some other tuners, but I did notice that because it's on the Motec I, and I, I see a lot of cylinder heads from different manufacturers or different tuners and all that stuff. And you'll notice that the Motec, the way that they do the two-step is much different and the rolling anti-lag is much different than say uh, an AEM or a Haltech or something like that. And it actually is a little um, nicer to parts. But kudos to Randy. So Randy is a, uh, is a very accomplished tuner. He tunes Ron Rhodes' car. And that is just one of the baddest dudes you'll ever see. Ron Rhodes shows up at a race. You can know that he is probably gonna go to the finals if he can get there but the guy almost like never has issues and he's just a bad dude. Randy tunes that and he tunes this. He tunes a lot of things. He also tunes uh, PR Beauty's car. And um, you can kind of tell that there is somebody with smarts who does a lot of things uh, outside of street cars because he is very kind to a 1500 horsepower Supra. Exhaust valve, although it's full of oil, barely any valve flow. I mean, I'm talking, there's just the tiniest, tiniest of ledges. Uh, the only issue that we're gonna have here is the margin. So the margin is this area here. And the margin is so thin already, like right from Ferrea, this, this margin is very, very thin. So it doesn't leave us a lot of room to be refacing it and being able to put it back together and it being happy. Um, but there's also another situation. Situation is that Frank wants to make more power. So he's at 1500. He got a um, whatever that eight speed transmission is from the BMW. So he's putting a pure uh, transmission in it and he wants to make 1800 now. 
and uh, that is gonna be one bad dude. So what comes with bad dudes is you're gonna need badass parts. He's already got the badass CNC cylinder head and now we just need to put a whole bunch of good stuff in it. Now since we're just talking about the exhaust valve and the margin, I just wanna show, so we are going to put the GSC uh, six and a half millimeter stem valve in it. Now, the six and a half millimeter is an oversized valve. You do not need oversized valves for 1500 horsepower, or 1800 horsepower. But what we want is some strength because I know Frank's gonna beat the crap out of it. And you can see, as I said, the margin's thicker. And that's not the only thing that's thicker. Do you see the stem diameter? So this is the GSC and it's a six and a half millimeter stem. It goes into a six millimeter stem at the top so you can still use all the same spring kits and the locks. And then this is the old valve. Now I've used the Freya valves up to 1800 horsepower. It's actually on Geo from Real Street. I think it's probably the most popular one when he went to TX2K and put a whooping on all the UGR twin turbo Lambos. But in this situation, I just know Frank and I want to protect the cylinder head from Frank. We're also going to switch from the GSE dual spring to the 5086 conical spring kit. Now you're probably wondering, why would you go from a dual spring to a single spring? Well, a conical's not really, um, in my mind, it doesn't have all the issues that a single spring has. It's actually probably one of the best things that you can ever use. Uh, this 5086 spring kit we actually use on all the fastest Supras on the planet. Go grass and it's on the taco, it's on uh, white rice, it's on every single car that has ever come out of head games and other shops and it's a really great spring because it has so much spring pressure that uh, and the rate is freaking amazing. It is light years ahead of a dual spring and honestly it's the best spring on the market. You can't buy anything better. Now, when I say the best, I'm not saying it because I'm just uh, a fanboy. I'm saying this because you literally can't get anything that has as much seat pressure, as much open pressure, has the clearance to cool bind, has all of those properties in a valve spring. No other manufacturer makes it. And, um, and that's why I am saying that. So when we worked with GSC on this, uh, we, did, we helped them with the development on it on white rice and uh, this kind of came from our Viper program with the Calvo. We were using the conicals there and Greg is, um, Greg's all about making stuff better. So this is better. Uh, the other problem is that it, I just know that this particular spring is not the best for everybody. I would not use this for a, um, a daily driver because it has so much spring pressure that we, and actually Frank, uh, I told Frank, we actually don't know the life of this spring because the, it has so much pressure and we don't know if uh, you could run it for, I don't know, 20, 30,000 miles. This is not known, uh, but we do know that we've put it, uh, Greg has had it in drift cars and um, it actually works really, really well in that situation too, because it just does not float the way that uh, other springs will. So on camshaft wise, we actually don't have the cams because uh, Frank's replacing them. He's gonna put the GSC R2 cams in it now. Now, when we did the development on that one with uh, Dewey from with White Rice, the S2 and the R2M or S3, this is gonna be kind of in between those uh, it has a little bit more exhaust duration. It is a really bad cam and it's made for 1500 horsepower plus. You don't want to use it under 1500 horsepower. It has 11 millimeter lift and it has a bunch of duration and it's going to really sing with this, this transmission he's going to do. It's always going to be in power and he's going to be able to rev it till, you know, 9200 RPM and make power up there. So sadly, it's time for us to part. I'm sitting here thinking about all of Frank's abuse, how he's gonna abuse this thing. But I think that for as many years as this thing's been gone and how long he has been beating the crap out of it, I think we did a really, really good job. Um, and uh, I have nothing else to say about it. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles.